Right, continue. This is AI, AI access investigation, right? Image figure seven. It says control linkages under tension. Now, this picture here, you, you are not seeing what you think you see. Let's start with the underside of the wing. You have here the underwing pylon, and then you have these black and white bands, which are the D-Day band markings. So you've got white band, black band, white band. Let me just show you on picture of the Mustang. You've got the underwing pylon there, you've got white band, black band, white band. Now, from that white band there to the centre of the fuselage, you have, I think it's about 2.8 feet of structure. Well, that structure is not in the picture, is it? That structure is the part of the underwing tank door. There you go, look, there's the pylon, white band, black band, white band. And then you have your underwing tank doors, which are these. There's the red line there, it runs from there to there. They're stress panels, they form part of the wing structure. And they're screwed up onto the airframe. So this whole section of structure is missing. Now, it, it's impossible that that tank door could have failed on that line. It's a stress panel. It, even, it actually has strings running along it on the inside. It could never have failed on that line. The weakest point would have been along here on the centre line, where it's screwed up here. If we look at the wing structure of a Mustang, the wing is made up of two halves, a left hand and a right hand wing, and they're bolted together on a centre rib. Right hand wing, left hand wing, they bolt together here. Then that whole main plane bolts up onto the fuselage. It forms the bottom of the cockpit floor. That's actually the control column there. All that attaches that main plane to the fuselage is four bolts. These four bolts here on these brackets. Now imagine that aeroplane, that wing, hitting a tree. It's going to fail at its weakest point. So it would have just sheared these brackets here because they're not designed to take a shear load. They're designed to take a tension load when that wing is bending up or down. So that wing, if it had hit the tree, it, there would have been compression and then it would have just slewed round like that. What alleged, allegedly happened couldn't have happened. Now, as I've just demonstrated to you, 2.8 feet about of that fuel tank is missing. This is the Mustang fuel tank. This is the inboard section here. You've got a rib here, you've got a flapper valve here, which allows the fuel to flow one way, which would be to the this way. Now that whole section has been torn away. Now the air accident investigation branch tell us in their report that the right hand fuel cell remained undamaged <coughs> and that they were able to measure that there was, I think it was 26 gallons of fuel in it. They couldn't have. If you also think that when the aircraft was banked at 60 degrees, all the remaining fuel, when that was torn away, it would have just poured out. So it could never have happened. Also, that fuel cell has been ruptured. There's no smoke or fire damage under here, which is very odd. Right, I have to try and remember to say everything. Right, the other thing, this type of this picture is control rods under tension, control linkages under tension. The control linkages are actually up here. This one, I believe, has been edited into the picture because it's dead straight. If that engine would fall down, it would have bent it. It's not in quite the right position. Now, the control linkages couldn't have remained attached to the engine. So, here. Those are your control linkage there, they link up onto this, I've just stuck a pin on here, that's the back of the carburetor. Now imagine the engine fell down, look at the distance from the end of those control linkages to the back of the carburetor, they could never have reached, couldn't have happened. We're also told that the RPM levers were all found in the fully forward position. Now imagine if that engine fell down, all those control rods would have been pulled forward, which should have levered 
the throttle and RPM levers to the aft position. But also, <laughs> it would have all just sheared, broken on these points on the connections here. Could never have happened. Right, the other, th other, other feature in this picture is this uh, bottom cowl here. Now I noticed that there were some very unusual tabs on it here. There are no tabs on that bottom cowl. That's the bottom cowl in there. There are no tabs on it. This cowl has Zeus fasteners. It comes up onto here, under here, and it just screws up onto here. The screws engage in these holes here. It doesn't have any tabs on it. And if you look at the tabs, they're, they're square. You wouldn't design tabs like that on an airframe structure because it's weak. Now look at the direction they've bent. If the engine had fallen down, they'd have bent the opposite way as well, which alerted me. If you look at the cowl fasteners here, they suddenly start bunching up here and they turn black. Someone has cropped this and edited it. Why? Because when they positioned the engine in this image, they realised that the engine belly cowl was too high to the point at which it had fallen. It's fallen from this point here. It can't fall down and then end up being higher than the point it's fallen, or it wouldn't have fallen, would it? So that's why that's been edited. You can quite easily see that if you if you enlarge it. Uh, this engine bearer has been cropped slightly. This one's been cropped slightly. You see the change of colour. It's tapered when it should be parallel. The end square should actually be angled. Um, these allegedly, these this is what's under tension. Well, that very much suspiciously looks like to, like a chain with a turnbuckle. This, if it's meant to be a fuel line, is running up above to this point here. All the fuel lines run to the bottom of the firewall, which should be there. Now, the other oddity here is the position of these clamshell doors, the undercarriage doors. If you follow the line of fuselage down here, the hinge line is on the side of the fuselage. They should be centre line of the fuselage. Model. They are on the centre line of the fuselage. So what you're actually seeing hit in that picture, these are my undercarriage doors. Somehow, they've they've moved across to the side of the fuselage here. So that that whole centre rib would have had to have detached from the other wing and is shifted over to here. Well, it could. And I don't know, I have, to, I have to try and remember what I've told you. Uh, you also need to look at the angle between the side of the fuselage and this wing. That angle should be 85 degrees, because the, the width is about 5 degrees dihedral. Look, look at the angle between there and the underside of the wing. It doesn't form the right angle. The wing is at completely the wrong angle, which suggests that it can't be attached to the fuselage for that reason. Also, the wing root here, the wing, this wing, should actually be in this position here should be on that line there. It, it's a constructed image. You also, if you, if you enlarge it, you'll find blocking and stuff here, which is evidence also that someone's been interfering with it. But I think I've talked to many of you. The other thing is, it's, it's clinically clean under here. There are no hydraulic lines or fuel lines. There's nothing. That's, it's a very busy area in those wheel wells and under that wing in that area. Now, the other thing, the Air Accidents Investigation Bar said that they were able to test all the controls that they're working. Well, all this structure's been pulled away, which is where all the controls are, and the control cranks. They've all been severely damaged. And the same with the fuel system, would have all been severely disrupted and damaged. But they alleged they were able to test all the controls and prove that they worked. I don't they couldn't have. Right, I think those are the main features for that image. All these images you can actually just get on the internet yourself, download from the internet yourself. You'll find all these manuals on the internet and you can get all these pictures up for yourself. That's the far wall. The far, the far, the um, fuel lines run in at this point here. They, they don't come in up here. Right, I think that's all for this video.